Hello, this is Scott from Optics Realm. Today I'm going to be talking about first order imaging through a lens using uh, algebraic equations. This is my tutorial 3 and it's September 2011. The goal of this class is to provide algebraic methods to understand how a lens images. And I have a subtle um, motivation to somewhat confuse you with sign conventions because this will lead into a method of imaging through a lens via a nomograph in an upcoming video. So we have two methods for doing sign conventions in a lens. We've got the so-called Cartesian coordinate system as well as the empirical system. In a Cartesian coordinate system, any objects to the left of the lens are negative and anything to the right of the lens is positive. Doesn't matter whether you're a virtual or real object, it's, it's set up the sign convention is set up based on geometry as opposed to the empirical where if you have a real image to the left of your lens you've you're going to have a positive distance and this flips when you're doing uh, a, an image to the left of the lens it will be a virtual image it's inside the lens you can't physically touch it or image it onto a piece of paper it is negative Various sources, and I've listed them here and here, various sources use different um, sign conventions. And uh, I ask, are you confused? Because I am. And even after getting my bachelor's in optical engineering, sign conventions really confused me. I was forever making a mess, but making uh, mistakes. And I have another method for keeping track of sign conventions I'll show later. I'm not going to really try and bias you as to what sign convention to use, whether it's Cartesian or um, empirical. I'm going to be using Cartesian for, from here on out. Uh, it's what I'm more used to. So let's talk about imaging through a single optical surface. And uh, so what we've got here is a, single, a piece of glass with a single spherical surface. This radius of curvature is positive. If you follow the sign conventions, because the center of curvature is to the right of the surface. So what is the power of an optical surface? So power is the difference in index between the two media divided by the radius. And the power is actually the inverse of focal length. And we'll be talking about power a little bit later. We're going to predominantly use focal length. So the focal length is really the radius of curvature divided by the differences in index of refraction. If your first media, this media here, is in air, your focal length is simply your radius of curvature divided by your index minus 1. There's actually two focal lengths. There's a front focal length here and a back focal length here. And those focal lengths relate to optical thicknesses. I won't go into detail there, but the, the equations for the front focal length are minus n times f, and the back focal length is n prime times f. The reference here is this field guide to geometric optics by John Grievenkamp. It's a cheap, cool little book. It's 40 bucks for a non-member from SPIE. It's chock full of great knowledge and great equations and John does a great job of teaching it and uh, I, I took his graduate and undergraduate classes and yes I'm biased for him and I'd like to see him profit but the book is really worth its money let's talk about imaging through a refractive surface um, now you, because you've got two different index of refractions you can use this imaging equation here and again this uses the Cartesian coordinate system n prime divided by s prime this is this s prime is your image distance here is equal to the difference in the index divided by radius plus your incident media divided by your object distance if you're in air the equation simplifies to this equation here for a reflective surface i'm not going to go into much detail again i'll reference you to grievenkamp's book I just want to point out that for a reflective surface, it's a special case where your secondary medium is actually the negative of your incident medium. So n prime here equals negative n. And the consequence of that is your focal length is your radius divided by 2. So if this is your mirror, here's your center of curvature. So from here to here is your radius. Your focal length is halfway in between there. Let's talk about imaging through a lens. Now I've shown a thick lens here. This 
equation works for a thin lens, meaning infinitesimally small. Uh, it's a first order equation. This is using the Cartesian coordinate system. The equation is 1 over s prime equals 1 over f plus 1 over s. Again, this is a, a, a Warren Smith or John Grievenkamp nomenclature. And if you have a real image, like is here, your s is negative. So let's give an example. Lens has a focal length of 100 millimeters, and the object is real and located 150 millimeters from the lens. What, where is the image? Well, you plug and chug, you've got to know that this 150 is really negative. You plug and chug into your equation, you get s prime to be 300. And oh, by the way, the magnification is roughly 2. I'm waving sign conventions here. As opposed to the empirical equation, there's actually a negative sign here between your, your focal length term and your object distance term. And I'm forever messing this up. Hopefully after doing this, this uh, PowerPoint presentation, I'll be more apt to remember this. Again, I'm not going to bias you, but I don't like this method, so I'm going to put a buster sign through it. We talked about magnification. Magnification is a parameter for understanding how the, the image size or image height is a function of the object height. And for a lens in air, it's simply a ratio of h prime over h. Now, because of similar triangles, you know, this h and this s versus this h prime and this s prime, magnification is also a simple ratio of your image distance divided by your object distance. If your lens isn't in, in air, you got to worry about reduced thicknesses. It's s prime n divided by s n prime. Again, I reference uh, John's book. Great book. Here's some homework. Very simple homework. Very straightforward. Uh, except this last one. This last one, uh, extra credit here. I would encourage you to use um, this equation here. This equation uh, will work out. You can do the last homework with these equations, but it gets confusing. And again, um, I believe that uh, you know doing some of these, you're going to be a little bit confused because sign convention. And that's probably my fault because I showed you both. But I want to show you that sign convention can be confusing. Next time I'll talk about an imaging nomograph that helps me visualize how lenses and mirrors work. Uh, thank you for paying attention. If you have feedback, please visit my website at opticsrealm.com. You can get me on uh, email, scott.sparrow at gmail.com, or on Twitter. Yes, when I set up my Twitter account, I did not know how to spell optics. Thank you, and uh, stay tuned.